Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is video number four in our journey of making an application using Koa, Node, Mongo. So we're still setting up our Koa environment. I want to take it piece by piece so that we can understand how, what pieces we're bringing in, how we're piecing them together. And again, this isn't the only way to set up your environment. That's the cool thing about Koa, that this the core Koa um, package, you know, basically offers you the ability to essentially set up your server, uh, everything else you kind of add extra pieces on so you can choose alternatives and you can really kind of build uh, the workspace that you want, use a templating agent you want, use alternative views engines, alternative static plugins, but essentially this is sort of the, the, the standard way of doing things. Um, now we're getting into the views uh, today. Now here's where things start really becoming more diverse in the sense that there are several different templating agents, uh, templating engines available for Node. Um, we're going to be using Nunjux today, but there are many. Um, Pug, uh, EJS, Handlebar, Mustache, many more. They all do pretty much the same thing. What they do is they allow you to send data to a template that's going to be rendered into HTML for your user. So basically what it'll do is it'll take the data you send it, the template file, mush it together, and then send the rendered HTML to the client in their browser. So that way you can have a much more dynamic website depending on you know what's the user's information, um, all sorts of cool stuff. And there's several aspects of a template. So generally a template has a way for you to put in the variables, the information that you put in there, and well, we'll get there. So first let's set it up. So here is the information for setting up views in Koa. Okay, so first thing you need to do is download the M MPMI Koa views. That's the Koa views um, package that allow you to connect your templating engine, uh, your templating engine to Koa. So that way when you do a route, you can just, it'll just send it to your uh, views engine, regardless of which one it is. Then there's, um, we're going to use Nunjux, so MPMI Nunjux, so you get the Nunjux. And then we need to bring it into our library, so the way we do that, we just go const views equals require Koa view, so we're bringing in the package uh, into our file here. Cool, so that's step number one. Then we need to actually define how views is going to work, so again we need to add it to our middleware. So let's go back to our middleware section. Okay. And notice I'm going to put it before routes. The reason being is that you can run into an issue um, if a route if a routes runs first, because what happens is that you'll have a route, a request comes in, route will figure out which route to send it to, but it has no idea how to render the engine because views hasn't ran yet. So you're going to want views before routes, and you want public you want the static folder after routes because you want your routes to decide where it goes. And only if it doesn't get routed anywhere does it then check the public folder. Okay, so again, you have to think through the order of your middleware and parse sort of like how it's checking your routes. Most of the middle, most of the time, and most of your middleware won't matter where it is, but sometimes it does. Cool. So here's the view. So here's where we're bringing views. So server.use. So that means it's a it's a piece of middleware. So basically, what it's saying is that it's going to run this function that we brought in views which says, hey, I'm gonna go look in the views folder for the file uh, that you want for a particular file. And this kind of sets the options. So map just means, hey, here's the information that we're gonna use. So for any HTML files, we're gonna use Nunjux to render it, okay? So we're gonna run it through the Nunjux, the Nunjux uh, rendering engine. Cool, so that's basically what that is. Once you have that, it should all work. And now let's practice by sending a route. So let's go back to our root route, which we've changed over here. So the run through that again is route.get. So this is going to be a get request to the root of our server. So that's why it's just a slash. And there's our two, and then we have to throw in a function as our second saying what happens when this uh, request comes in. So we know that this request is for this, but what happens is this over here. So we're saying context next, our two parameters, arrow function. And what it's going to do is it's going to return context.render. So that means we're actually going to render a file. So when we did context.body, we were just sending a string, and it was rendering that string. 
Okay, so you could do just a string of text, a string of HTML with context.body in the previous video. Now context.render, what that's going to do is going to say, hey, send it to this file here, okay? And it's going to apply the rendering engine to it because it knows to do so because we put it in the middleware. So it's going to say, hey, it's a .html file. That means nunjux needs to be used. Cool. And then name, um, well, we have this object here. So I'm, as a second parameter to render, I'm passing an object. And in that object, you can put as much data as you want. So right now I'm just passing one variable, name, and it's what it's doing, it's sending that piece of data to uh, that HTML file. So that way it'll use it and I can use it as variables. Okay, and the name of that variable is gonna be name. So here's the name of the variable, here's the data in that variable that's being passed onto index.html. So I go to my views folder, because again, here we told it to go look in the views folder whenever we send an HTML file that'll be rendered with nunjux. So it's going to go into the views folder and look for an index.html. So there's, so here we go, index.html. And again, it's all pretty basic boilerplate HTML, but we put one line here, welcome to this website. And then this is how Nunjux allows you to put variables in there. So, so we sent, we sent over that piece of data name, and now we can display it with name. Neat. Okay, so now let's try that out. Okay, let me cancel the server I already have open. And let's go node index.js. Okay, it's listening on port 1985. Let's head over to Chrome. Okay, and well, technically I was just there, but let me refresh it. And there it goes. So there it says my name, because that was the information I sent it. Welcome to this website, Alex Merced. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's do something even cooler. So let's copy this route. Control C. And what you can do is you can put a variable in the route. So what you do is you put the colon, or you put a colon, and you put the name of your variable. So we'll say name. So that means anything I put after the slash is name. Okay, it's going to be considered my name variable. And I can do that with several variables. I can be like name, age, and then basically it'll read each of those slashes. Not as a directory, but as a variable. But let's just do one, name. So the difference here is that instead of passing through Alex Merced and just giving it a name, I'm going to let it use whatever name is in the URL. So what we have to do is context.params.name. That's what it should be. So that means, so saying context, any parameters are in the URL. So parameters are in the URL. Okay, um, and you have to name them. So, and it's the one that we call dot name. I could put other stuff there, but it won't recognize it because I didn't name any other variables in the URL. So let's save that and let's give that a shot. Okay, I think I got the syntax right. Let's see here, anything I should change here while I look at it? No, I think that's fine. Context of parameters and name. Yep. Okay, so let's hit control C. Okay. Let's restart our server, node index.js. It's listening on port 1985. Let's go over here, and instead of typing localhost 1985, which would still say Alex Merced, because that route's still there, we'll say, now we'll say Bob Jones. Or we'll just say Bob. And there it goes. Welcome to this website, Bob. Okay. Because the minute we put something after the URL, this route says anything that's the second part of the URL is a variable and then passes that variable onto the index.html file, which again is rendered with nunjux over here. Pretty cool. And you could actually have a long string of variables. So I could pay, say, um, let's see here. Oh, actually, I won't go through too many variables right now. We'll do more cool stuff later on. But the one thing I do want to point out is that by making this the root, making this the root, I have to be very careful. So any routes that I have that have like a set name, I'm gonna want them to be put in the file before this route. Because if it checks this one first, this will take anything after the slash and run this. So that means it'll capture the, the client's request beforehand. So like if a client said, 
let's say I had, I had another route that was a route for slash blog, but then someone typed, but I put that route below it, like down here, then what's going to happen is that when it looks for slash blog, it'll find this route first and be like, oh, okay, blog is name. And it'll just say, hey, welcome to this website blog. And that's not what you want. So you're going to want to put it here, like above this route. So that way, when it goes slash blog, it finds the actual blog route before it hits this route. So, okay, so again, always be careful with sort of the order you're putting the stuff um, in your routes and in your middleware because everything's running from top to bottom. And again, a lot of times it won't matter um, because the routes have different names, they don't collide with each other. But the reason I'm mentioning these things is because you might run into errors where you'll get frustrated and everything looks just right. And what it is is just you may have middleware in an order that's causing it to be weird, used, executed weirdly. Um, you might have your routes in an order that's causing a conflict. And kind of having that knowledge ahead of time will save you a lot of trouble when trying to figure out what your problems are. Also, when a website doesn't render correctly, do check your console. Your console will give you errors um, telling you sort of what its problem if it doesn't find a file or something like that. So make sure you're always double checking that. So basically, that's how you set up your views. So again, that's, we set up Nunjux and how Nunjux works uh, right now. Well, there's a lot more that Nunjux does, which we'll explore as we go on. But this is the basics of setting up how to use your routes to send information to Nunjux. And um, we're getting further along down the pipeline. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one and enjoy.